first of all, it was a big breakthrough to bring Syria into the Chemical Weapons Convention back in September. <clears throat> and so Syria joining uh, as the 190th country, the state body, to the Chemical Weapons Convention was a, was a major breakthrough in global security and demilitarization. The agreement with Syria and the United Nations and the Organization for the Prohibition of Chemical Weapons was Syria would move all of its chemicals um, to the port of Latakia, uh, and that's not an easy task given the, the uh, civil war in, in Syria right now. And then all of those chemicals would be removed from the port of Latakia uh, by a Danish and a Norwegian ship uh, by the first week of February. That deadline has not been met, <coughs> and part of that was uh, thought to be the, the concerns by the Syrian military on the, uh, on the security threats to the convoys on land in Syria. But the good news is that about 50%, as we speak here in mid-March, of Syrian chemicals have been moved to the port of Latakia and removed from Syria. So there's about 50% more to go. There's a total of, of 1,335 metric tons of, of precursor chemicals uh, used to make sarin nerve agent, mustard agent, and other deadly chemical agents in Syria. Uh, about 135 tons maybe of that will remain in Syria and have, has been largely destroyed already. Uh, a chemical called isopropyl alcohol, uh, which is used in industry pretty widely too. <clears throat> of the remaining 1,200 tons, only 23 tons of that are actual agent, mustard agent, and that'll be part of the, the top priority chemicals. It's, they've largely been removed now from Syria. But there's still 50% left, which is about 600 tons. So there's a lot of movement still to take place. And uh, there's been a lot of pressure from the OPCW and the United Nations, the U.S. government and the Russian government uh, and others to get Syria to get these chemicals safely to the port and get them out of the country. Um, I'm, I'm convinced all of that will happen at the latest by the end of April. So we have <clears throat> another month or six weeks to go. And then, of course, the big challenge is uh, you need all of the laboratories, uh, production facilities, mixing facilities, and the like to be destroyed in Syria. Uh, a lot of that has been done already. <clears throat> it was done last fall, as soon as Syria joined the Chemical Weapons Convention. Um, some of it, particularly uh, bunkered, armored production facilities, there's still discussion around that. But I'm, I'm optimistic that'll take place in the near future as well. So. The next step is all of those chemicals have to be moved by the Norwegian and the Danish ship. These are transport ships to the Italian port of Gioia Tauro uh, because Italy has volunteered to use that port as a transfer point for some of the chemicals to an American uh, ship, the MV Cape Ray, uh, a modified merchant marine ship, which will process the chemicals, will neutralize them on board in a wet chemistry process. All of those chemicals uh, will stay on the ship. All of the toxic liquid effluent, which will be about 10 times the size of the original volume, probably over 5,000 tons, will remain on board the ship. And then a second stage process will take place for either bioremediation or incineration of these toxic liquids in uh, Finland, Germany, Britain, and the United States. The process has gone forward with, with some political bumps along the road, but. Uh, there have been a lot of countries who volunteered money for this. Twenty, at least 25 countries um, have contributed to the Syrian Trust Fund at the OPCW. <clears throat> the United States is spending probably well over $200 million on this whole process with the MV Cape Ray and the field hydrolysis units. And Syria itself will indeed um, you know, be a chemical weapons free country uh, within a month or six weeks. So it's, it's actually a very good step forward. And the big, uh, big challenge now is to bring in the remaining six countries that lie outside the Chemical Weapons Convention, Angola, South Sudan, Egypt, Israel, Myanmar, and North Korea. And, and some of those obviously won't be very easy to bring in. Uh, but I'm, I'm very optimistic, you know, in our lifetimes anyway, we'll, in the next decade, let's say, we'll see a world truly free of a whole class of weapons of mass destruction. Our, our, you know, leaning for, you for two decades now in our environmental security and sustainability program has always been that you need full stakeholder involvement. You need all interested people, whether it's government officials, outside experts, uh, environmental activists, uh, public health regulators, and others involved in a process that's really contentious. 
So the destruction of chemical weapons, you know, these are the, some of the most deadly substances on Earth. The destruction of them take considerable dialogue and, and public discussion and better understanding of, of the processes involved because there are public health and environmental and safety risks in all of this. We had proposed to the OPCW, <clears throat> to the United Nations and uh, the United States and other countries as early as last September uh, that in fact there must be full stakeholder involvement at least in the Mediterranean where these chemicals will be destroyed on board the ship. Uh, there are growing concerns, there have been protests, demonstrations, petitions with thousands of signatures from countries like Greece, Turkey, uh, Crete, Cyprus, Italy, Spain, <clears throat> that in fact there is some public health risk to all of this. And even if the process goes perfectly, which I think it will go close to perfectly and will be in the end very safe, it's really in the public mind what's most important. And if the public, say the tourist industry, fishing industry, is concerned that high toxic waste, you know, these deadly chemicals we're dealing with are going to be dumped or seep into the Mediterranean. There could be enormous, potentially catastrophic socioeconomic impacts. So we had proposed doing a dialogue, a uh, day-long dialogue, a conference with all stakeholders in Rome, uh, jointly with our, our Italian affiliate, Green Cross Italy. We also wrote a letter to uh, Secretary, uh, Defense Secretary Chuck Hagel in the United States and Secretary of State John Kerry in the United States and, and sent those around to many of the United Nations and OPSW officials that we should also consider having a web, dedicated website with a daily update as to how operations are going on board the Cape Ray. And we should also um, consider putting a webcam actually on the ship itself so the people could themselves uh, build confidence that in fact the operations on board the ship are going well. And I think one of the challenges now is a lot of the countries are very nervous, including Italy and Spain, the United States, uh, Syria itself, um, are very nervous about much of a public discussion, thinking that this might awaken sleeping dogs, so to speak, and may become much more of a politicized uh, operation than it really should be. Our, our leanings are the other direction, that public dialogue is part of dealing with contentious public policy issues like this. So we're, number one, we're supportive of all of the operations taking place to destroy safely and, and irreversibly destroy Syrian chemical weapons. But we also think there needs to be much more of a public dialogue in the Mediterranean. <clears throat> I would also point out in second stage destruction of the toxic waste from this process, there will be four countries involved, you know, Finland, Germany, uh, Britain, and the United States. And we've also recommended there be public dialogue at those sites, which we all have identified and so that people are more um, understanding and there's better public awareness and not so much paranoia um, and un unanswered concern, genuine concerns of the public as to the safety and, and risk, risks involved in eliminating a whole class of weapons of mass destruction like this.